Welcome back to my channel. Today I will give you a probably long overdue review or my thoughts on the movie that was Fantastic Beasts and the Crimes of Grindelwald. I have made two reviews of the two extra things that J.K. Rowling have made in my very beloved Harry Potter universe. And each time, as I look back on my review or look back on the thing that she's made, I realize that I've been too kind. Um, I kind of want to make a video kind of going into depth about why I was too kind on The Cursed Child and the first Fantastic Beast movie, but that is not this video. This video is how I feel about Crimes of Grindelwald, and this time I'm not gonna be too kind. I have four main points as to why this movie did not work. Point number one is that there was too many characters. There was all the characters that we knew about, plus a handful more. Just sprinkle them in. And they all had storylines, they all had secrets that I, as an audience member, was supposed to care about, but it all happened on such a small time that I just did not have the time to empathize with all of them. This was especially true for Nagini, whom I was just told, here's a snake lady. Also, she's in love with this boy? Maybe? We don't know. It's sad for her. Feel sad. And I went, cool. And then there was Lestrange whom we were told, very explicitly told, that she was hated because she was weird. She was the most hated wizard on Hogwarts, whatever, something along those lines. Yet she had a really high up ministry position and she was marrying one of the ministry darlings. What? It just didn't make sense. And then, spoiler alert, she dies. What? I had no time to feel for her. Her storyline was really weird. There was a brother that was killed. What? In between everything else. What? And then she just dies. And when she did, I was like, okay. Because there were so many storylines, once we were out, I asked my friends, what happened? <laughs> Could somebody give me a summary of the plot? And we couldn't. It's just not possible to summarize in like three quick sentences. We didn't really know who the main character was. Who had changed? We were talking about that this would have made great sense for a book. Um, and it was clear that J.K. Rowling is used to writing books in which you can have 10 characters because you can write 900 pages, but you just can't do it for a movie. You just, it just doesn't work. And it especially doesn't work when you're doing lazy storytelling. Now, like I said, especially with Lestrange, it was just, we are told information. I am telling you that I am hated. I am telling you that I am a snake lady. I am telling you that I can suddenly remember everything, but I don't show you. No, we don't show you. We just say it and then we expect the audience to go, okay, that's fair, I'll buy it. My biggest crow with this was with the whole obliviation thing. It could have been really interesting to d dive into it and be like, oh, this is why, this is how Jacob remembered. This is how it happens. This is how he found Queenie again. But no, no, we just give you two lines of dialogue. Here you go. Moving on to a less interesting story. There was also the whole storyline with Newt and his brother, um, where one, Newt was clearly older than the other actor and it was a bit weird they were trying to pass him, him off as the younger brother. Hi, editing Melina here. I just looked up the um, ages of the actors and here you go. You can tell that down here we have Eddie Redmayne, who is 37 year old, years old, and here we have Callum Turner, who plays his older brother, and he's 28 years old. So, um, my eyes weren't deceiving me. There was almost a 10 year gap between these people and they chose the younger one to play the older brother. Second of all, we were just told that they didn't like each other. We didn't see it. We weren't shown why. And then suddenly they liked each other again and fixed it. And that's just kind of how most of the storylines went. We got some information told to us, then we did other things. And then, oh, now we've got told a resolution. And it just left me feeling empty and feeling like, I don't really know what happened. I don't really care. Then there is the ending. Now, when I first wrote this list, 
I was very upset about the ending. My exact reaction when it happened was turning to my side and going, what the fuck? No. Of course, not out loud because, you know, we're in a cinema and I'm not a complete dickhead. The idea that Credence should be a Dumbledore is absolutely insane. Uh, I'm not happy about it. And later on, uh, I realized that Grindelwald might be lying and oh my god, do I hope he is lying. But at the same time, I just don't trust Rowling anymore. I don't trust her. So for all I know, this could be real. And it fits perfectly into her new thing of changing the canon, where she takes things from Harry Potter and goes, oh, by the way, this happened. And then people go, did it? Because the book says it didn't and then she goes oh but it did here you go there's also of course the entire thing the original i'm gonna tell you things that aren't in the book and take it as canon dumbledore sexuality i mean how could i not mention it let's be real um there was this whole thing it was about dumbledore being gay after the seventh book of Harry Potter was written. You might have heard about it. It's slightly hinted to in the text and later on in interviews that Grindelwald and Dumbledore had a bit of a thing going. And that's where it ends. That's where we keep it. Um, the movie does hint at it. It sure does. Things like, we're closer than brothers. And him looking into the mirror of Erised and watching Grindelwald. And it's just, it all seems very subtext gay up until the point that we realize that it's because they made a blood pack. I mean, I knew I shouldn't expect more than that because the director has said that they weren't going to explore it, but I'm still disappointed. Uh, that is the story that would have been interesting, exploring Dumbledore having to take down his former lover and see him dealing with those feelings. Because to be honest, I've seen powerful white men fighting before. I don't need another story of that. Finally, there is Grindelwald himself. Obviously, still not happy that Johnny Depp is playing him. Personal issues with Johnny Depp aside, I don't think he's the right actor for it. I don't think turning Grindelwald into a new Voldemort and showing him as this all evil character who looks like a superhero villain, like let's be real, and trying to tell me that he can like persuade people when he looks evil. Just one look at that guy should tell you to run the fuck away. But no, we're gonna make it real explicit that he's evil, like we do with everything. No subtext. And I'm just- it just- it just makes the story less interesting. The, the interesting villains are the ones where you can almost see where they're coming from. And especially with a villain like Gundelwald who was trying to overcome what he felt was oppression for his people and in turn ended up oppressing other people. And that could be interesting to explore, but no, we just get a cartoon villain who's evil all the way through. And I just think it's bad choices. That's the thing, this movie has everything going for it on paper, but there's just so many bad choices made in it. And I know, who am I to say how it should have been done better? I am just a media production student. I am not a worldwide best-selling beloved author, but am I going to do it anyway? Yes, I am. Which means next week there will be a video in which I explain how I personally would have done this series, um, how, what I would have thought would be interesting to see. And if you think that could be interesting to watch, please come back next week and watch it. I'd love to know what you think, both on the movie, on the points I've made, do you agree, do you disagree, why, but also if you come back next week, I'd love to hear how you would have done it differently. So yes, those are my thoughts on crimes of Gr the crimes of Grindelwald. I will probably continue to watch the rest of the series because I've already sold my soul to the Harry Potter universe, but it's just gonna make me more and more sad. Thank you for watching. <laughs> I hope you have great days and wonderful times with movies that doesn't slowly kill your soul. Bye.